my channel where today I'll be doing a tattoo tour. I've done two tattoo tours before that is really hard to say for some reason, two tattoo tours. But I haven't done a full tour since my first video so I thought I'd just go through all of my tattoos this time. And I feel like this is going to be a really long video so I'm going to get straight into it. The first tattoo I got was this tattoo in 2019. I call him Howard but he's a carousel horse. He's named after the best friend in Randy Cunningham Ninth Grade Ninja if anyone has ever seen that. But yeah, he was my first tattoo and he's quite big for a first tattoo. Everyone is always surprised that he's my first one, especially because I have smaller ones around him. But I wanted a big tattoo first because I had so many ideas for tattoos and I just wanted to get started. He has a lot of references in him so I'll go through them now. First of all we used to go on a lot of holidays to the beach when we were children and at the end of piers in the UK there used to be a lot of carousels. They're not really around much anymore I think it's because of safety reason like the pier is too old to have a big metal machinery on it but they very much remind me of my childhood so that's why he's a carousel horse. One of my favourite movies is also Mary Poppins the Disney movie but in the Disney version they go into the painting and they ride carousel horses and I always loved that bit when I was a kid. I really like film where cartoons and people People interact which is also why one of my favorite movies is Who Framed Roger Rabbit which I don't have a tattoo for I feel like I should but I don't currently but yeah if you actually look at his frame this bit of the frame just the circles and the dots around the outside that is a copy of the frame that's actually in the movie obviously it's a different color it's just the chalk frame that Bert draws on the floor but that is why this frame is here and yeah I just think he's really cute and he's a really nice first tattoo I get a lot of compliments on him I feel like he's the tattoo that people I know like the most he's also the most obvious so that's probably also part of it the second tattoo I got was on my knee I got this again in 2019 I got this with one of my friends we both got tattoos on the same day hers was completely different from mine hers was a quote from a TV show I think but we got these as walk-ins in a random shop in Nottingham I can't even remember where it was or who the guy was but it's a copy of a logo for the Quiet Monster Cafe different colours because I wanted the colours to match my aesthetic a little bit more and the green and the purple weren't really something I wanted on me at that point in time. This tattoo is even more special to me now because the Kawaii Matsu Cafe is shut down sadly. We went there in 2018 when we went to Japan. Best holiday of my whole entire life. It made me realise that I wanted to be more alternative with my style and everything like that and the Kawaii Matsu Cafe was really much a catalyst for that. So yeah it's a really special tattoo for me. It has a lot of meaning even though it is just a logo. Third tattoo I got also in 2019 was Pokemon on my back. So these are the starters from Pearl and Diamond they're also the starters in the remake of Pearl and Diamond but I got these specifically because the first Pokemon game I ever played was Pearl and I played it with both my siblings and we all picked a different starter we still try and do that now if we buy Pokemon games so these Pokemon represent my siblings and also my love for Pokemon and they're in age order so the Turtwig is my older sibling the Chimchar is me and the Piplup is my younger sibling. Next up is a poison bottle on my stomach. I got this as a part of a flash. The artist put up a flash sheet of different poison bottles and they're all different colours and you just went in, picked a colour and you got that done. So I got the green one. I feel like the green really went well with poison. I didn't really want the love ones. The only other one I really wanted was the purple and that one went first so I'm really glad I got in second so I could get the one I really wanted. I want to add something around it because it's currently the only tattoo on my front. Like I have tattoos on the front of my legs but it's the only thing on my torso at the front so it really needs some friends but right now I think it looks really cute and I wear a lot of crop tops so it kind of shows and I think that looks really adorable all the time. Next up still in 2019, last tattoo of 2019 is my fancy man Mr. Crow tattoo. So he looks like a plague doctor but he's actually a character that my younger sibling designed. So he is a man with a crow head, it's not like a plague doctor mask, it's just his head. Most of the time I just say he's a plague doctor because it's so much easier to explain. But yeah, he's actually a character designed by my sibling. And me and my older sibling have these matching. They got theirs first. It's kind of in the same place. It's more down here. And it doesn't have the cloud behind it. But the little design at the top is the exact same. The cloud I got specifically because of the Peter Pan ride in Disney. In the queue, they have like pink fluffy clouds at the top. So that is what the cloud is based off of. Next up is my first tattoo of 2020, which is my lucky cat. So I collect lucky cats. I really like them. I just think they're really cute. I really like the meaning behind them. All the different colors mean different things. And I just find them very intriguing, very interesting to research. How many do I have in my room currently? I have one, two, three, four, technically five because he's number five, but I have four on my shelf. I just think they're really cute things and I do believe in luck, so I feel like they are a nice representation of my belief in that. And then he is on a yellow rose. I didn't mention the yellow rose in my last video because it was still quite new that my grandparents had both passed away, but the rose is to represent my grandparents. Basically, my grand's favorite flowers were yellow roses, and my grandpa used to always buy them for her, and it's nice having them around. Next up is TikTok on the front of my leg. I call him TikTok because we used to call them TikTok men. That is not their actual name, but they didn't really say their name in the show, so we just call them TikTok men. But he's from Doctor Who. He's from my favorite episode of Doctor Who, which is called The Girl in the Fireplace. It is a David Tennant episode of Doctor Who. He's not my favorite doctor. My favorite doctor is number nine, which is Christopher Eccleston, but his creatures 
stories are a lot scarier to me. Like the scariest thing in my childhood was the children with the gas masks. I really hate gas masks, I can't stand them. But I feel like they are the most iconic monster from his era. So if I wanted to get something from his era, I'd have to get that, which I don't really want to get. I feel like I kind of have a Christopher Eccleston tattoo, we'll go into that in a second. But yeah, I really love this tattoo. I think it's my favourite tattoo. I just think it looks really cool. I like his little creepy hand. And I really liked Doctor Who when I was a kid. I don't really watch it anymore. I haven't watched it since the middle of Matt Smith, but when I was a kid I really loved it so I like having a little reminder of my love of children's TV shows. Next up I got two tattoos in the same day so I'll just talk about them individually. First up is my Moan Raft tattoo. So this sign is from Alice in Wonderland, the Disney version. I really like Alice in Wonderland, I like the book as well. And I also like Alice Through the Looking Glass. As you can see, I really like children's things and children's books, TV shows, movies, all that sort of thing. And I wanted it in more my style, so we did a tie-dye in the background and I feel like it looks really cute. People seem to hate this tattoo, they think it's really muddy, but I really like it. The other tattoo I got that day is my planchette tattoo. I also believe in ghosts, I don't think you should bother them, I don't believe that people should be going ghost hunting or anything like that, I don't think it's really respectful. But I wanted to have something to represent ghosts without just drawing a ghost, because I felt like that wouldn't really go with my tattoos. And I really like like planchettes I feel like they're an interesting shape and they're very recognizable and this is one of my favorite tattoos I think it is really cool and it's kind of a shame because I can't see it because it's on the back of my arm I can't even film it properly because it's in a really awkward place and then it's on the back of my arm so it's upside down when I do this so sorry if the video is really bad of it but this is one of my favorite tattoos I love it next up is my Fantasia tattoo and I just got my favorite scenes from that movie I have since learned that that movie had a very racist section that was taken out of the movie when I was a kid so the copy that I watched didn't have it in it because they took it out. Instead of addressing it, they just removed it from all the movies. But even so, I really like this tattoo. I really like the tattoo artist. I want to get another tattoo done by her. I kind of want to get the Princess and the Pauper, the Barbie version. I think they'll look really cool and then I can have them both on the back of my legs and they'll look really nice together. So yeah, I do really love this tattoo. I just wish I had done more research on the movie before I got the tattoo because I haven't seen it in years and I didn't know any of this information beforehand. So what I'm trying to say is before you get a tattoo, always re-watch the content that you're actually getting tattooed because just because you have nostalgia for it doesn't mean it's necessarily good. I feel the same about a lot of movies that I did used to like as a kid. Arish the Cats, Road to El Dorado, there's probably a lot more. Those sorts of movies, people have tattoos of them a lot, but they're not necessarily very nice movies to marginalised groups, so please be mindful of that. I should have been more mindful, but I still feel like it's okay that I like the tattoo. If you disagree with me, please tell me down below. But yeah, that's my Fantasia tattoo. Next up is the tattoos I did on myself during the pandemic. I do not condone this. Do not do tattoos on yourself. It is very dangerous. I should not have been doing it. But what I did on that day is I did a little heart on the side of my foot. I just wanted to have something cute and small. I tried to fill it in. It's kind of faded quite badly, but I don't know whether that's just where it's placed on my body because it's on the side of my foot where it presses against my shoe. So I'm not sure if it's because I did a a bad job or just because of the placement. The other tattoo I did was a balloon from It. I really like the movie It, the newer version of it. I feel like it's just a really cool movie with very aesthetic kind of pieces to it. So I got the balloon from that. I do not like the book at all and I'm not really a big fan of Stephen King but I wanted to have a balloon from the movie without it being far too obvious that it was from It. So yeah, that's what I did. Next up is my daggers. This is the point where I talk about how these are kind of Christopher Eccleston tattoos. They are from Macbeth. So I have Lady Macbeth and Macbeth. There are two daggers that they used to kill the king and then they haunt Lady Macbeth and Macbeth for the rest of the play. And I wanted to get this done because Macbeth was my favourite play at the time. It is now my second favourite play. My first favourite play is Tamburlaine, which is by Christopher Marlowe, which is the exact same time period, so they're both Renaissance plays. I love a Renaissance play. I prefer Renaissance plays to all sorts of other plays. I'm not quite sure why. I like musicals and I like opera, but then when it comes to plays, I like them to be Renaissance. So on the Macbeth side, he has a blue circle behind him. The blue circle represents Lady Macbeth influence over him and then on the Lady Macbeth side she has a jewel on top of her head to kind of represent how she actually owns the crown because she's the mastermind behind everything and like I said before it's kind of a Christopher Eggleston tattoo because I saw him play Macbeth in my favourite version of the play. The witches were played by children which I love, I love it when they do that for Macbeth. Porter was very much a main character and he's one of my favourite characters in the play. He has a very small role in the original play but in this they really embellished it, he's always at the back of the stage and then when someone died he put a little chalk line on the wall 
really cool. They had a clock that counted down the whole time to Macbeth's death. It was done in a horror style. Oh, it was such a cool version. I will try and find the year that, that was put on and then I'll put a link somewhere. I'm pretty sure you can watch it on BBC. I have it on DVD. That's how much I love this play version. It is so good. Same day as I got the daggers, I got this little dead tattoo. This is a love heart with the word dead in it. I got this for two reasons. I really like love hearts and I wanted to get a cute little love heart somewhere. And then my favourite My Chemical Romance song is dead and I really like My Chemical Romance so I wanted to get kind of a My Chemical romance tattoo without being overtly emo in style because it doesn't really match my aesthetic. I do have some red tattoos. I think my Mickey Mouse has a red jacket on but most of the time I go for a dark pink over a red. I didn't want to have something too bold black and red. I just wanted to have something nice and cutesy that kind of goes with the theme of the song. So in my mind this is a poison love heart that someone's gonna eat and die and I just think it's really cute and it's also a really good gap filler. Like this little gap is so awkward and it fits so nicely in there. So in July 2021 I have not been saying these these days I will put them up on the screen. I got this little mouse. I got it mainly because my mum calls me mouse which is kind of rude because it's because I'm the shortest but I do think it's a cute nickname so this is kind of my ode to my mother I guess. And he's holding a little strawberry which I just think is really adorable. I think he's just a really cute tattoo and I like having a tattoo that's more natural in colour. I feel like Howard is kind of natural because he's kind of a white colour but this little mouse is a normal mouse colour and I feel like he's really adorable and it makes me want to get more animal tattoos. Like maybe a tattoo of my cat would be really cute. He's kind of a similar-ish colour. I feel like he's just a really cute little mouse. He doesn't have a name. I need to name him, honestly. The next tattoo is my moth tattoo. This is a rosy maple moth. I really like moth tattoos. I feel like a lot of people have moth tattoos and I always think they look really cute. So I really, really wanted one. And then this flash came up on my Instagram feed and I immediately got it because I really like the colours. I'm not quite sure if rosy maple moths are real moths or not. You can get pictures of them on Online, but I really can't tell if they're real or fake. They look really fake. But anyway, these colours just went really well with my aesthetic. I think he looks really adorable. He also doesn't have a name. I really need to get on my naming game. Next up was my Apom tattoo. He's also in a really awkward place. He's here on my inner arm. And this was a pastel tattoo, which is why you can kind of see he's much lighter than the rest of my tattoos. But I wanted him to be pastel, which is why he kind of looks like he's faded. I feel like we went a little bit too pastel on the little star because it's pretty much gone. But for the most part, I feel like he looks really cute. It's probably already very obvious because I already talked about my other Pokemon tattoos. I just really like Pokemon. I saw this as Flash. I really wanted it so I got it. My next tattoo is my cat's tattoo. This is Gimbal Shanks from Cats and just for the record I'm not talking about the movie. I don't want to associate with that movie. It was so bad. Just watch the 98 version. It's just a filming of the production. It is so much better. The costumes are so good. But anyway, Gimbal Shanks is my favourite character from Cats. He's the railway cat. I really like his song. I feel like he's very cute and I really like ginger cats. In real life, ginger cats are very chaotic and I feel like that is kind of my vibe. So I wanted to get him and I feel like he's very adorable. On to my final two tattoos. I got these on the same day and they're just little gap fillers. First of all, I have the Hourglass from Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. That's my favorite Legend of Zelda game. I just wanted a cute little gap filler and this was kind of the right shape for that. And it's just a copy of the video game, obviously, because I wanted it to look accurate to it. And I feel like it's really cute. I really like the angle we did. We didn't want to have it straight up. We kind of angled it a little bit and I really like the little jauntiness it gives it. My final tattoo is my bubble tea tattoo. I am absolutely obsessed with bubble tea. I get it every single day. Sometimes I get it multiple times a day. Do not judge me. But I really wanted to get bubble tea and we got it in my favourite flavour which is lychee with lychee pearls. So that's why it's kind of a light yellow colour with white pearls in it. And then we put some hearts around it just to fill in the gap a little bit more. And then in the reflections of the plastic cup, we went in with the trans flag colours. So that is pink, blue and white. Just as a kind of subtle price flag and I think it looks really cute. But yes, that is it for this video. Finally, I feel like I've been talking for hours. My throat is hurting. It doesn't really help that I don't really talk on a regular basis. I haven't seen anyone in person for a week, so this is the first time I'm talking in a whole week. So yeah, my throat is actually killing me. <laughs> but I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Comment down below what else you'd like me to do your thoughts on my tattoos, your thoughts on anything I've talked about quite honestly, and subscribe as I post a new video every single week and I'd love to see you again. But until then, bye!